What is money? What is it really? Just paper. <laughs> Currency is a form of exchange, an intermediary. You buy stuff, you sell stuff. But we place a lot more into money, don't we? We place our values, our interests, our association. And we've created these institutions ever larger to transact that capital. Stocks now trade at a push of a button out in cyberspace. And we expect these institutions to safeguard our interests and protect our welfare. But what happened? <laughs> Financial disaster, the worst loss of wealth since the 1930s. Amongst other things, it brought into stark contrast the fact that these institutions, banks, insurance companies, and others, they cared more about their bottom lines than they did about our communities. What we're facing is a mismatch of values. Luckily, we can envision an environment where we can build a healthy community, creating jobs, public welfare, while still earning a reasonable return for ourselves. We can imagine capital that we have direct access to with investments we care about. But to do that, we have to move from Wall Street to Main Street. Luckily, it's already happening. We haven't seen some sort of communist revolution, but we're not sitting around waiting for government to solve our problems. We're using the power of the marketplace to leverage our own self-interests. Local investing for all, community investing. This is part of a wider universe called Social Responsible Investing, or SRI. It's actually the fastest growing segment of the investing marketplace. One in nine dollars here in the United States today actually has some sort of social screen on it. And in Europe, with retirement funds, one out of four euros has a social screen. So how does it work? You remember this movie, It's a Wonderful Life? Jimmy Stewart, he plays George Bailey, the head of the local building and loan association. There's a run on the bank and it's gonna get closed, but then it gets saved. How? These folks, these neighbors, these customers, these friends, they bring their pocketbooks, they bring their pee banks, they bring their change. Why do they do this? because they trust him, they care about this institution, and they want it to be an active part of their environment. This is not a new idea. This has been around for generations and it happens over and over again. Barn raising. The return on investment is literally can be the difference between life and death. You help your neighbor because you know that they're gonna need your, you're gonna need their help in your time of need. In the 1970s, the concept of black power actually had a lot of positive tenets to it. One of the thoughts was to build strength and wealth and opportunity amongst African-American communities by people buying and selling from each other. Internationally, you have international microfinance. That's something that's here to stay. Grameen Bank, for example, in Bangladesh, with which I was affiliated with, now has billions of dollars of assets. Its millions of customers are mostly poor women, and in fact, they're on their board. And the HQ of Grameen Bank in downtown Dhaka is one of the largest buildings in the entire country. This is the element of the triple bottom line, people, profit, place. So how do you do it? Luckily, there's lots of ways. First, you can control what you buy. Think about what you spend money on. According to the New Mexico Green Chamber of Commerce, for every $100 spent at a big box store, only 14 of those dollars are actually gonna stay here in our community. If you buy local at a local store, $45 will stay in our community and that money gets recycled again and again. That's more than three times difference. Second, move your money. Community banks and credit unions are safe. They're FDI insured, and so your money is guaranteed. It's not gonna get lost. $42 billion in assets are growing here in New Mexico. And in fact, in 2010, the New Mexico State House voted to place all of its capital locally here in New Mexico with New Mexico institutions. That's pretty progressive for our political, and political leaders, isn't it? Number three, move your money. Do you know what's in your stocks, your bonds, your mutual funds? Well, you can be active with your own choices. You can vote your shares called proxy shareholding. And you know what, if you don't like a stock, you sell it. That's also making a statement. Fourth, exchange your time. Time banks and other methods of barter actually allow you to take an hour of your time and trade it for an hour of somebody else's. 
Technology is making this more and more possible. It's removing the middlemen and allowing you to have direct access to investment opportunities you might care about and have interest in. For example, Prosper.com is part of what's called peer-to-peer -peer lending. Think of it as eBay for the debt set. $315 million have been lent through Prosper.com, and this is just one of many institutions. Crowdfunding is here to stay. It started off with philanthropy and donations, but now there's increasing opportunities to have a return on investment, either with barter, exchange of things, and also for return. And with new laws coming up, we might even see a greater opportunity to democratize this opportunity. 2.5 million people have used Kickstarter to transact $315 million. Local investing clubs. Lion, less than five years old, already has 20 chapters nationwide. And Slow Money held its inaugural conference right here in Santa Fe about three years ago. Community investing. It's here in New Mexico. These investments are safe. These investments are principled and have values. They contribute to our community. And they democratize control, often taking things away from institutions that didn't seem to care about us anyway. Do you have a dollar? Do you have a million dollars? You got to start somewhere. Buy local. And with the holiday season coming up, you can do that. Move your money, own what you own, and exchange your time. Local investing for all. Capital worth more than the money it's printed on. Thank you very much.